Okay, hello everyone. So, this hopefully will be a nice short video on just installing the software. Um, if you can't yet, I do have an email out to IT inquiring regarding IT support of dedicated VMs. Um, this video isn't going anywhere, so if at any point you do get access to a system that can install it over the course of the semester, feel free to go back and follow these instructions. If not, you'll either have a dedicated VM at some point, or you'll be working with someone who does have access to the software. So, uh, there are several different versions here. Uh, some of these are installation files, some of them are not. These are, I believe, all included, with the exception of this old folder. Um, in the folder I linked on a Canvas announcement not that long ago. So, we have two installation files for, oh, actually, hold on. Uh, there we go. That might make things a little bit easier. We have two installation files for Windows. We have two installation files for Linux. These are all 64-bit versions. There does not exist a 32-bit version. Uh, the verification suite is mostly just to make sure it's set up and installed properly, I believe. Uh, we won't really be using that. I've included that just out of a sense of thoroughness. There is an install guide, which is a whole lot of information regarding installing this thing. It's a hundred pages. So hopefully everything you'll be need will be included in this video. If not, then you might want to review this for any basic troubleshooting, or you might want to reach out to me if there's issues. Uh, so Oh, actually, this is an outdated version. Uh, let me move that one. These are the two window versions we want, 17.06. Uh, there's also some tutorial files here, which will be useful, but uh, not yet. These aren't part of the install process. So the difference between these two different Windows installs and these two different Linux installs is you'll notice that one of them has a dash R8 in the title. That is an important distinction. Uh, so there are actually two versions of the software based on what we'll be doing. We really won't need the R8 version for the most part, although it is available if we run into issues in the future where we might need it. Um, and that is mixed precision, or what they call mixed precision versus double floating point precision. The R8 version uses double floating point numbers for everything. that needs a floating point number. Everything. The So this increases memory requirements when you're running the software because it takes physically more memory to store that extra information associated with a double floating point number as opposed to a single floating point number. The one without the R8 uses some double floating points, but also uses some single floating point numbers. It uses mixed precisions. So usually this is fine for most applications, but if you get into um, applications that are extremely sensitive, the extra precision associated with a double floating point number versus single could potentially make a difference. I don't think it's going to for anything in this class, but just be aware that um, the double floating point number can or double floating point precision version can be useful in some applications. Um, primarily associated with higher energy flows, high supersonic, or um, multi-phase or multi-species flows or things like that that tend to be much more sensitive. Uh, for this tutorial, what I'm gonna be sticking with is the single floating point version for Windows because I'm clearly running this on Windows. Um, so we have the zip file. I already have it downloaded. You will need to download it from the Google Drive. Let's, uh, hold on a second here. Uh, let's extract these files. I'm just going to extract them to the folder where it's currently residing. You can't see it, but oh, there's a little seven zip status thing that just finished decompressing. So we have an installation folder. 
turn that down just a little bit. We have a installation folder. So this has a whole, just a couple things really. Uh, the important thing is it has a batch file that if you run that batch file, it'll get things ready to install. Surprise, surprise. Uh, so, depending on what type of computer you're running this on, you might run into an error that says something like this, in that I didn't run this as an administrator. So let me go ahead and it'll close that automatically. And you need to run this as an administrator. Um, the account I'm recording this on does not have admin privileges. So I just needed to authorize that really fast. And let me pull this up here. And, whoop you should get a menu that looks like this. Uh, as usual, there's a license agreement. You'll need to accept it. Uh, do not select Express, select Custom slash Advanced Install. There are a couple things we need to change. You could take or leave the Participate in the Product Excellence Program. I'm going to uncheck it, but you can make your own choice there. You should probably leave this as the default local path. Um, program file slash Simmons as the installation location. Um, it should be on whatever primary, like, presumably, fa hopefully, fastest local storage you have, hard drive or SSD or whatever. Um, as far as the components, uh, the only one we really might actually use for this class is Inex. Um, out of an abundance of thoroughness, I'm just going to check all the things. Um, you, we won't need virtual reality, but virtual reality can do some nice things if you happen to have the hardware for it. Like if you were doing, for example, flow visualization of a building, you could literally walk through the building and be like, oh, hey, this is what the flow is doing. Or, you know, visualize the flow by being inside of the flow um, visually, which could do some interesting things. I'm going to leave this off, but... Uh, now, the one thing we will need to check here is the SimCenter Star CCM Plus Power On Demand License Server. Check that box. That's important. Um, you will probably get an error that looks something like this. Uh, that, I expect, is fine. Go ahead and hit next. Um, we will address that shortly. Um, so you want to let it through the firewall. Share the install directory. I believe this is if you have multiple users. I might be incorrect on that. Um, it's either that or it shares it on the network. I think this just shares it with multiple users. Uh, actually, no, I think that shares it on the network, actually, because the installation should be for everyone on a computer by default. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then it just summarizes everything you've got. Uh, so the important thing is, I don't think it actually says it here, unfortunately. It tells you what you have, what you're installing, how much space it takes, how much space you have, and it'll actually install it. There's some status bars that are popping up in various places on other monitors, um, but hopefully all goes according to plan and you wind up with a installation at the end of the day. Hang tight. I'm going to let this finish and then we will get back around to actually starting it up and starting your first simulation. Okay. After some time, it should have completed the installation, and it'll tell you if it did it successfully or not. So hopefully it has been. If not, um, we can try and troubleshoot. That's what the time after the lecture part on Friday is for. So if you do have issues, um, bring in whatever those issues are and talk to me about them there. Um, as far as issues, if you're trying to install it on a laptop, Obviously, you can bring the laptop in and we can look at it there on the spot. 
if it's on a desktop computer of some kind, um, then you can take screen captures of the issue in question and bring the screen captures. Or if you can set up some sort of remote access to your desktop, then we can troubleshoot it remotely. Um, but we'll we'll do what we can to help troubleshoot if there are issues. Hopefully there aren't. So let me go ahead and minimize this. Minimize this. Uh, stand by one second. So this will probably have created a couple of different shortcuts on your desktop. I just moved them both over here, so you should be able to see them. These are SimCenter Star CCM Plus uh, 2210-0001, otherwise referred to as version 17.06, and the viewer. So the viewer, I don't believe, needs a license, but this does need a license. Um, so the viewer is something that you can use to view um, pre-created scenes or other information from within Star CCM Plus, whereas this top one, the one that does not say viewer, is the actual simulation software. So we're going to go ahead and start that and run it. Uh, da, 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 da. So you will get a menu that looks something like this. Hopefully exactly like this. Uh, and when we start a simulation, we won't need any special provisions, except we will need to add that POD key. But before I get to that, let me go through the licensing setup, or the setup for opening a simulation here. So this is the same whether you try and open a simulation for the most part, or create a new one, which are the two buttons up here, load or create. Um, create on the left, load on the right. The only difference is if you're loading a file, you need to point it at a file to load. That's basically the only difference. So we have this top box here. So this top box has several options here. We will only really need two of them. Those and these options all correspond to the processor. How much compute power are you allocating? to the software. So simply serial means you're using one processing core. It does one thing at a time. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it uses one, it does one step and then it does the next one only one step at a time, serial. It does everything in series. So it uses one processing core one processing thread. Parallel means that some things, and I want to emphasize this point, some things it will do in parallel if it can. And when you select this, you'll get this option of compute processes. This is how many cores or how many threads are you allowing it to use. So how many you should allow it to use is going to depend on your, you guessed it, your computer processor. So let me check something really fast here. Um, just to verify. So in this particular case, well, this is a little bit complicated because of the more recent computer architectures. Uh, but this particular processor has 24 logical threads. Uh, it actually has, I believe, 16 physical cores. Um, this is the the wacky CPU architecture of recent years where some cores are big cores with two logical threads and some cores are small efficient cores with one logical thread. So I believe I have eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores on this one. So if I have eight physical CPU or sorry, 16 physical CPU cores, I'm going to let this software use 14 of them, which is not all of them, but most of them. If you had eight cores, you might let it use seven, for example. Um, you're always going to want to leave one free because the operating system uses some amount of processing always. 
Um, so generally, the rule of thumb I go to is if you have more than about 12 cores available, do number of cores minus two. If you have less than 12 cores, do number of cores minus one. Note, this is the number of cores, not the number of processing threads. Processing threads, you can have two per core, but that only really works if they're running different things. If they're trying to run the same thing, it doesn't work all that well. So this is the number of physical CPU cores you have, minus one or two, depending on how many you have. Uh, so you could always use serial, but if you have more than one core, there's really no reason not to let it use parallel. If it can use more than one, it will. If it can't, it'll only ever use one. Uh, we won't use the job scheduler really, so don't worry about that. I will circle back around to the saved configurations part in a second. So this brings us to licensing. So there's a couple of different licensing schemes here. Default is it will go and check a license server, or it will check to see if it has a license file locally to run the software. The answer is none of us will. We don't have local license files. So default is not what we want. You have read-only mode where it doesn't require a license. It can open a file, but it cannot change anything. So you can check things, you can reference things, but you cannot change anything. This is going to be great if you want to basically see, okay, what did this other simulation do? And you don't want to change it, you just want to see what went on inside of that simulation. So read-only is great for that. Um, and if you're not changing anything in a simulation, you just want to look at it, read-only mode. Um, Star System Plus Lite is kind of like default, just it uses a a light mode license. I'm not entirely sure what it means because I've never used it. We don't need it. Uh, power session is similar to default, except it uses a power license, quote unquote. And the only difference between a power license and a regular license is a power license will let you use as many CPU cores as you have. But again, we won't need this because this depends on a local license server, which we do not have. The one we want is SimCenter Star CCM Plus Power On Demand. This will give you the ability to fill in these two fields, the server and the key. The key is that POD key I put in Canvas. I'm not showing it here specifically because I don't want it to be out on the wider internet. Um, and this one I don't believe is any is valid any longer, even if it ever was. Um, so that will be that effectively random string that I posted on Canvas. So you put that random string in here and you will be able to run software with that. Uh, so if we need to change anything, we can edit any of these options the hard way down here, because you'll notice all the information that we told it is down here. We're telling it we're running Star CCM Plus, we're running it in server mode, which means we're running the software on this machine. Um, we're telling it that, well, to use a license. Um, we're telling it to use 14 cores. Number process is 14. We are telling it to use a power session license. We are telling it to check this server for that license. And we are telling it in the process of checking for that license to use this POD key. So if we wanted to edit any of these options, we could edit them right here. If we wanted to change which server it was pointed at, if we wanted to change the number of threads, um, if we wanted to change whether it was power session or not, if we wanted to change anything about this, we could here. But for the most part, we'll change all of this with this GUI up here. Um, 
And because it can be a little bit annoying to set all this up every time, we can save configurations. So I'm going to save this. I'm just going to call this test. Oh, that's annoying. I just realized that. I apologize. I have to figure that out in post um, because this is a 1920 or a 1080p monitor and the canvas resolution on this recording is set to whatever the other one is, 2560 or... Um, like 1440p. Oh, well, I'll figure it out later. But anyways, um, let me see if this is even legible. It looks pretty legible. Okay. Um, so we can hit save and it will save that. So if we Change settings. Let's see. Let's just set this back to some random thing. If we hit test, it'll bring it back to the settings we had. So this won't work now, but I'm going to pause this for a second here. I want me to tell you what I'm going to do before I actually pause it all the way. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to swap out this POD key for the one that everyone should have access to on Canvas. And then I'm just going to hit OK, and it should start the simulation. And we will resume after it's done that. Okay, so it's missing some lines of text in this output down here. Um, because I cleared it out just so the POD key wasn't visible. Um, but you should get it to put some lines of text down here in this output window. And hopefully it should find yep yeah um yeah so it told us that it's checked out one copy of a power session license star ccm plus power from the star ccm plus servers um it has this successfully checked out and we have this tree of folders on the left this is where a simulation starts and this is also where this video will stop. But this is how you install the software and open up your first simulation. You will start doing things with this shortly.